Hey everyone, welcome back. Today is October 7th and I'm super excited to show you how our garden's doing. Behind me is our smallest garden and look at that. That's just two weeks after planting seeds and putting in our established plants. We've had a couple days of good rain and I'm gonna take you around and show you the entire garden area today and show you how everything is growing. So here's our first garden here close to the house and our entryway. Fall is one of my favorite times to plant and it's also one of my favorite times to decorate during the year so I always like to incorporate little items into the garden to make it feel more like fall here because we are in central Florida we don't really get much of a leaf change um, but I absolutely love the fall colors and enjoy being outside this time of year. Um, I want to show you over here these are some of the Baker Creek seeds that we put in. There were, I didn't realize how many seeds were in this seed packet, but this is called Rocky Top Blend. And apparently there was a thousand seeds in there. I thought I would not get that good of a germination rate, but I certainly did. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna go through here and thin these out or just kind of let it be. Um, I've watched videos where people have not thinned their lettuce and just let it grow and they did well with it. Um, I, I absolutely hate thinning out seeds. I feel like I'm just wasting a plant. Um, here is what's called bib lettuce. We grow this every year. There's some more actually in my tower. This tower has been so awesome. Um, we have some, let's see what we have. We have rainbow chard at the bottom. I've never grown that, but look at how beautiful that is. I've seen pictures on Instagram of how beautiful these are and look at those leaves. And there is what's called butter crunch. Red Romaine, more Butter Crunch, and have some strawberries from the top with a zinnia. It should at some point kind of tower over this. And my daughter just sitting over there. <laughs> but this has been fun. I, we've harvested a couple of, um, couple of salads off of this tower. It was so easy. Um, so my husband and I actually want to try to look into getting some more. So if you guys have a certain brand that you like of these towers, let me know. This was actually given to us and um, I love it so much. Over here, I have a bed of celery, some more onions, and this is kohlrabi. These are all still small plants. As soon as I put these in the ground, I fertilize them. Um, I usually skip that step um, just because our garden is so large. We have a 10 by 10, I'm sorry, 20 by 20 over here, another 20 by 20, and then we have this garden. So when I'm putting my plants in, it's just a very long task of putting all the plants in, getting everything nice, um, putting flowers in, decorating, just trying to keep it together. I usually don't fertilize until a week or two afterwards. Well, I was told that that is a critical time to fertilize your plants. So this year, that is what I did. As soon as I put them in, the same day I fertilized and watered them in. And so far, everything's looking beautiful. Um, these are French dressing radishes. I've already gone through and thinned a lot of these out. As you can see, there's some that are not thin. I'm kind of more so doing a little test to see how those will do not thinned. Um, what I did when I thinned them out, as you can see, I really did not think, again, my germination rate would be great with these. Um, but I harvest them and ate them like microgreens. Um, microgreens are basically plants that are at the early stage that are really healthy for you to eat. Um, I've looked into growing microgreens myself, um, but right now I'm just kind of getting a little taste of them as I'm working in the garden to see what type of microgreen I'm gonna like the best. What I've found is they, the microgreens taste just like the vegetable itself. These tasted just like radishes. And we also fed some to our chickens, which they went crazy over. Please excuse this little rope off. Um, I have little ones, as you can see, and we have a lot of little neighbors that love to come and run through the garden. And when our garden is in the stage where our plants are so tiny and hard to see, it is um, critical to keep everyone out so we don't have crushed plants and wasted time. So this is just an easy way for me to keep everybody out and it seems to be working pretty good. Um, this was our red cabbage. Um, I believe I've covered everything here. I've got my little plant stand all decorated. Um, over here we have my little herb garden. We've got basil, 
chives, rosemary plant. It's been in here for years. It's done great. Um, what I did is I've been using some different soils in my pots, kind of using more of a, a moisture control soil. I'll show you that what I'm using and what I've found. It's done amazing for the plants. My basil's never looked this good. We eat a lot of basil um, with our meals. So that kind of covers that garden. Oh, over here. This has been fun. This is my little Ikea baskets. I think these were like $12.99 at Ikea. I actually, we, we're not big Ikea fans. We go like maybe once a year, but when we go, we usually stock up on very inexpensive things like plates for our children, little toys for the kids. And they their garden section is pretty uh, amazing. So I picked up these, they can hang on a fence we figured we could take them out and use them in the house if they didn't work in the garden. I just have this on an old um, ladder, a grove ladder that we found at an antique store. And I have mint at the bottom and cinnamon basil, purple basil, and another cinnamon basil. I'm not even sure, honestly, what this tastes like. I haven't even tasted it. But, huh, interesting. It does kind of taste like a mix of basil and a touch of cinnamon. Either way, I wanted to see how that grew. My husband picked up this wheelbarrow from a job that he was working on. He is a builder and does a lot of demo jobs. And whenever he does a demo job, he always brings me back beautiful things. For instance, like this, these old rusty railings from a trailer he pulled out. Couldn't let those go to waste. But look at how beautiful this is, how this has grown in. We've maybe had this for a year, year and a half, but look at that beautiful winding through this. So I always love, he comes home at least once a week. He's like, hey babe, I pulled something out of the trash. I pulled something off the road or I pulled something out of the job for you. And it's just made me fall in love with repurposing things and uh, just, love you know loving rusty old things because you can bring it to life it's just beautiful so these trees are actually queen's wreaths if you have not been following along this shoots purple flowers it's beautiful through here this year um, instead of putting a bunch of flowers we've actually pulled out some of the flowers they got and got overgrown they're planted way too close and what i'm going to do is plant vegetables in here that's going to look pretty well at least the plan is to make it look pretty like popping red cabbage and kohlrabi maybe some carrots maybe some um radishes things that maybe we can make look like a flower bed but with vegetables i've already planted some snow peas here my daughter and i planted them along there and if you guys want to see more of my pictures um or quick videos i do a lot of daily posts of what our family and I are doing in the garden, planting seeds, um, feeding our animals. We have chickens, we have pigs, and we have some cows. We have an orchard um, with lots of different fruit trees that I have yet to show you guys. Um, one of these days I will certainly take you through a tour. Um, but if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm usually uploading stories daily of things we're doing um, in the garden and throughout our property. You can follow me at Summer Tucker Sodrell on Instagram. I'll put the link in the description below. In this row here, I have what's called Mongolian sunflowers. And the leaves are just huge. And these are Baker Creek seeds. And apparently these grow to like 16 feet tall, larger than my mammoth sunflowers that I typically plant. So I wanted to have a row there um, of those. And Again, we have this garden gets 10 to 12 hours of sun, and so does this one. And what I've found is it's just too much sun for Florida in our zone. We're in central Florida, so if I can plant my taller plants to shade out some of these plants, we're going to kind of test it out and see how much better they'll do this year. Um, I also have another patch on the other side. What I have here are okra, and then I have a big block of okra. We love okra. I also have planted two seeds. I have a row of just planting two seeds next to each other. And I also have one seed. Last year I kind of did three at a time, two at a time. 
I just did not get a, a, a good harvest from them. I don't know if I planted them way too close or I did, um, I didn't fertilize enough. I'm really not sure exactly what it was, but what always worked for me is doing one seed in the hole and making sure that they were spaced out properly. Um, I kind of like to squish my plants as much as I can and test it out. Um, usually what I found is a lot of plants or what, what the seed packets will tell you is you need so much room, so much space to, to grow certain plants. Well, I found some plants, you really don't need that much space. You have way more space than needed. And a lot of people don't have a bunch of space like I do to plant. So I kind of want to show and prove to you on certain things that you can put them closer together like peppers. Um, a lot of salad blends and different things. So throughout this these videos that I post I'll be showing you the ones that I've found that you can plant close um, and also if you know some that you can plant closer than what is um, Stated on your plant on your seed packets. Please let me know so I can share it with all of our uh, Followers here. So here is a couple of cherry plants that my neighbor has given me. They're actually doing wonderful and I'm sorry, grape tomatoes is what they're called. I have brandy wine here, never grown. They're supposed to be like purple tomatoes. I have my one very wimpy pepper plant left over from last year. And over here are our carrots. Carrots take a long time to germinate. But look at how beautiful those are. I get so excited when I do plant the seeds and when I come check in on in the morning time I'm just waiting for them to pop up it's crazy how fast that you'll just see a leaf popping out of the ground and then in the afternoon you will all of a sudden see full growth of a little seedling my husband didn't really get it either he would come out and be like hey is anything sprouted mainly over in this garden I'm like no I've already checked and literally that afternoon we could see the seeds emerging from the ground. And then by that evening, you could see full leaves in the garden. It was beautiful. So it's just fun to sit out here and watch how nature works and how children just love making a mess of things and running through the garden and enjoying the food. And watch out, baby, there's a plant. Let's go to the other garden. But we really do enjoy this. It's such a beautiful morning. So over here, I don't even know if I showed you these plants in the beginning. I think this was an afterthought. Usually when I make a plan for the garden, it always changes. Um, I can never stick with a plan because anytime I go into a store, I can't help myself but buy another plant or buy another packet of seeds. <laughs> so my plan completely changes. This, I think, is an it's called a buttercup heirloom squash and again in here we had a bunch of flowers um, we pulled up and decided we're gonna put plants in here I put this under this tree um, it still gets about six hours of sun right here um, and it gets some uh, late sun from over there in the evening and I'm just curious to know how these will grow this is um, spaghetti squash I've never grown spaghetti squash uh, I've tried to grow it but I've never successfully grown it and I thought maybe the shady area maybe we'll get some success <laughs> so we'll see how that goes in this little rusty wheel burrow this is my favorite one we got an antique store in North Carolina um, I've got a couple of zinnias and I popped in some marigolds there over here in this block, I've got beefsteak tomatoes. I went ahead and just put in my steaks. Um, what I've found is when I put my steaks in late, I'm putting my steaks into their roots and kind of disturbing the root system. So this year I tried, well, I still need to put my steaks in over there, but um, to put them in early so the roots would not be disturbed. And tomatoes grow so quickly that it can get out of hand with your other tasks that you have in the garden with pruning and fertilizing and watering. Um, we are on a, a drip system. Um, this will be my third season on drip. And so far I do love being on drip, but I hate fertilizing. So I've tried a bunch of different 
liquid fertilizers this past year and this year I'm just going back to what worked and I'll show you that here in a little bit what I am using but here instead of these wooden poles can get quite expensive and they usually don't last the season for at least a full year for us in summer is these are um, metal poles they're called I think the EP EP EMT poles <laughs> So that is actually what we built our rabbit fence with um, to keep the cost down. And I said, hey, these would work great as tomato um, steaks. So at least they'll last forever. I will not be investing money in my wooden steaks. Yes, they look beautiful, wooden steaks in the garden. But at the end of the day, I need something that's going to work and continue to work for all the years. Now over here I have my little mammoth sunflower patch. I've got two rows this year. I also have some back over there. We're gonna put snow peas along this back area. Then I have a thousand head kale, which is very hard to see. They're very small still from Baker Creek. Then I have a block of squash and they're looking really good. And I have a different mix of peppers right here. I have a whole block of peppers. I have everything from bell, uh, yellow bell, jalapenos, um, poblanos, and we even have, let's see, I've already forgot what I've planted. Oh, sweet banana, of course, our favorite. Um, so I have a few of those in here. Um, I think I've covered... So here's a lot of our seedlings that we still have left over or yet have not planted in our garden. Um, a lot of these will be popped in our front yard like our zinnias and um, I have a sunflower mix over here and some of these will go over in this area. I told you instead of putting flowers we're going to put in some plants. Um, we'll be popping those in as soon as they get a better root system. So I'm going to let them sit in these cells a little bit longer. And then some of these will be going to my first unofficial plant sale. I'm not sure when that will be, but um, I've been, me and the girls have been making loofah soaps. Um, we've been saving a lot of seeds from our plants. So we've always had these dreams of having a little plant uh, and garden sale. And that will be happening soon. I'm not sure when, but... I'll definitely let you guys know when that happens and give you an update of how well it worked. Um, figured if anything, the girls will watch me using things we've grown in our backyard to provide for the family. And I think that was just a cool experience for the girls to see that, hey, I can do this just like my mom and make a business out of it. We're always trying to find ways to inspire our own children, trying them with new things and seeing what kind of sticks and what they really enjoy my uh, little one, June. She loves planting seeds. She loves being out here. And Autumn loves harvesting the food. So uh, Sunday loves picking it all too early and making a mess. And she's starting to watch the other girls harvest the food and plant seeds. And she is following along in their footsteps. So that is something we'll do. And I'll kind of update you on that and see how well that goes. I just realized I completely skipped over our collard greens. These are in our small garden up close to the house. Um, they're supposed to do well in shade. I've always grown them in full sun. So I decided we'll go ahead and keep them close here where this is mainly like a shady area of our garden. Um, and these are Georgia collards. I think these three random ones, the leaves kind of look different, but I bought them all in the same um, container. So. I have a feeling these maybe got mixed. I don't know if they may be um, a different kind of collard green, but the leaves are different. Maybe even a, I don't know, maybe a mustard green or something. But those are doing really good. I also promised to show you guys the different soils that we're using in our garden and in our pots. Um, most of the time I am trying to garden organically. So in the past um, we've used this nature's care organic and natural potty mix for our pots um, anything that would be kind of in our tower garden or pots that we have around the, the, the house we'll use this um, this year um, at our local nursery the guy told me that this stuff's pretty awesome 
I don't see where it's organic, but I thought, why not try it out? So this is what we've used in our tower garden over there. And let me tell you, it is done amazing. So it is kind of expensive, but um, so far it's working in one area for us. We figured we'd try it out. Um, and then this is Garden Tones um, Chicken Manure. And this is all organic. Um, I usually would use the same brand, but it's just a general um, vegetable blend. This year I'm going to try the all natural plant food. I honestly think it's the same stuff as I've been buying before. Um, they're just calling it chicken, you know, organic chicken manure. So you guys will be able to see how well that does. Um, as far as all of our other soils that we've put into our rows every year, um, I go in and brush back all of our soil. I'm sorry, all of our mulch and add a layer of uh, composted material and garden soil because after a while that does get kind of mixed in with the mulch and um, drains into the ground and we kind of have a sandy base here in central Florida. So that's what we do. Um, and we're using just a general garden soil from our local nursery that we just buy in bulk. And that is the cheapest way for this large of a garden for us to do it. Um, put that in and till it in. We hand tilled it this year and um, hopefully you guys will continue watching. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Of course, always comment below. If you see there's something I could possibly be doing better, I'm always open to su suggestions because I am not your seasoned gardener. This is my fifth year gardening. I'm always looking for uh, new ways to garden, easier ways to garden. Um, so please make sure you subscribe to follow how this garden grows and the struggles that we run into. And um, we'll be seeing you guys soon. Thanks for watching.